Hello everyone, I'm Becky Goldsmith with Piece of Cake. It says so right down there at the bottom. And I'd like to thank you for joining me this week to take a time out at two o'clock central time on Wednesdays. Okay, here we go. The quilt behind me is Dresden Dots. And this is a quilt, it looks giant, but it's really not. It's about, <laughs> It's about that big. Um, Linda made this quilt, and it's in our book, Quilts with a Spin. And this is one of those quilts that, you know, we it's really cute. I've always liked this quilt, and you just don't see it very much. It's like it's buried inside the book. Linda and I, over the years, made a lot of quilts that are kind of buried inside the books. So it's nice to get it out and show you. Okay, oh, by the way, Quilts with a Spin is out of print, but it is available both as an ebook and I think as a print on demand book um, on our webs on, on the website at peaceocake.com. All right, so today we are talking about, I wonder if I can take that off. Yes, today I want to talk to you about zippered bags. <laughs> And those of you who make a lot of bags, you're going to look at this and go, yeah, I know that. Maybe there will be something new you don't know. But for a lot of people, a lot of appliqueers and hand sewers who don't really venture off into the bag making world, you're going to like this. <laughs> All right, so here we go. I said here we go. You know how sometimes you buy something and you don't exactly know when or where you're going to use it? That's what happened with these zippers. I have these three and one more that you'll see that I bought years ago in Houston at Festival. They are a Japanese zipper, they're metal, and they have these cute little chains and balls with the ball on it pull. This is what I'm using this week to make four zippered bags. And I'm using this bag as just sort of an inspiration. This amazing bag was given to me by a student many years ago. And she made it with a really special kind of like polar fleece. And she embroidered it. That's embroidered with a little bit of, I think, wool. I mean, really. This is an amazing little bag and I have loved it ever since. But the construction is very simple. She started with a long rectangle of fabric, put a zipper into the open ends, sewed up the sides, put in a little gusset at the bottom, boom, you've got a bag. So this is the inspiration. These are the zippers. And these are the first two fabrics that I'm going to make zippered pouches out of. Well, I said those are the first two fabrics. I can't remember now if they were, but I did use both of those fabrics. Okay, so I didn't exactly want to teach how to put in a zipper, but the more I sewed, the more I got to thinking you know, <laughs> if you're a hand sewer, you, you may not actually have ever dealt with zippers. So here is a zipper tutorial. Now this is zippers for bags where the zipper is more exposed. There are other ways to put in zippers where the zippers are hidden between the little flaps of fabric. That is not what I'm showing you. I'm showing you this. The first thing you have to do is put on a zipper foot. So the zipper foot is this one. Slide it on your machine. And then the next thing you really must remember to do is move your needle either to the left or the right, because if you don't, you're going to break your needle on the foot. The next thing you want to do is place your zipper right sides together with the first side of your bag. And I'm using Wonder Clips to attach it so that I don't poke holes where I might not want a hole. I wish the bag had been just the tiniest little bit wider than it is, but it isn't. So I'm centering my zipper over the bag. 
Notice that I've unzipped the zipper just a little bit, and that's because as you sew, that part of the zipper, the pull, gets in your way. So you move it out of the way as you sew. And I want to try <laughs> to see past the camera. Find my thing here. Find my pedal. Now, my machine does not always like to grab the front end of this. There's something about where the feed dogs are and where the zipper foot is that makes it a little unhappy. And I'm going to lengthen my stitch length because I don't want to tear up this fabric by having my stitches too close together. I may take this to a 3.0. Yep, I think that's about right. I'm using the right side of the zipper foot as a guide. And now I need to get that out of the way. The camera is right where I would like my head to be, truly. <laughs> so if this doesn't look perfect, it's because I'm having a real hard time seeing where I'm sewing. I could sew the other side on and then do the top stitching, but honestly, it's going to be a little easier to sew the other side if I get this top stitched. If this was fabric, I would take it to the iron and press it down, but I think the iron will melt the green stuff. So I'm going to use my fingers and press it down. What the top stitch does is keep all of this from interfering with the work of the zipper. And I'm going to want this zipper on the very top of the bag, I think. So I definitely want to get it top stitched. Now in this case, I want to move my needle to the other side because I'm going to top stitch closer to the zipper. If I was making a garment where you want the zipper to be closed with fabric in between, that is a whole other thing. And I'm not making a garment, so we're not even going to talk about it other than for me to say it is something different. And you know what? I'm going to make my stitch length even bigger here. I'm going to try 3.5. The original bag was sewn with very big stitches, and that is something to keep in mind if you're reusing one of these kind of bags. Now I want to sew the zipper to the other side of the bag. I'm going to make sure that my bird is right side up, and I'm being careful to position two sides so that they won't be cattywampus from each other. I'm going to give it a little back stitch. And I just left my stitch length longer. It's longer than it was on the first side of the zipper, but it's going to be good. And that is how you put in and top stitch a zipper. And yours will look a lot better than mine because you won't have a camera in the way. Oh, some YouTube is fine. Thankfully, YouTube is fine. I don't know why Facebook is having a problem, but apparently Facebook is having a problem. I'm so sorry, Facebook, but YouTube is fine. Thank you, Facebook. Uh, thank you, YouTube. Okay, so the green bag I was sewing, I think I show you more later. The green bag I was sewing is a Whole Foods bag. You know, the kind of plasticky outside bag. Think about 
the fun bags you've gotten, you know, they're sometimes made out of recycled plastic and they're inexpensive and you take them to the grocery store and you use them and some of those bags are really cute and you like them a lot. But maybe you don't need them, you know, you don't need a million thousand bags, but you can use those bags, cut them up and use them to make smaller bags. And that is what I'm going to do in the next video with a shopping bag I got from Johnny Was. Those of you who shopped at Johnny Was know that they have really nice bags to go with their really nice kind of expensive clothes but you know I don't have very many and I only had the one bag I wanted to reuse it okay so give this a look so this is a Whole Foods bag and I'm thinking that I will go find the perfect zipper to put in here and make a bag but for you what I did was I forgot to hit record before I started working on the bag that you're going to see next. I had this really pretty bag made out of, I'm not sure what, it's not really plastic, it's not paper, it's probably kind of like plastic. Anyway, I forgot to hit record so you didn't see me cutting off the bottom of the bag and then off of that I cut away the edges and once I got the edges cut off, these parts just sort of fell out and I was left with the bottom of the bag that had the indentation just like this, but in the bottom of the bag. And now I'll show you what came after that. Top stitching was kind of a pain, but not impossible. So now what I want to do is sew the two sides together. And to do that, I am going to find the center and center my zipper. So I'm going to go sew this side and the other side. And you want to leave breathing room at each end of the zipper. So I'm going to use a quarter inch seam allowance here on either side. And what's nice is this stuff doesn't ravel. Okay, I'm making notes to myself because not remembering to hit record really sort of threw me off. Um, so at the beginning of that last video, you got to see the green bag that I started with. That's the one I put the zipper in to show you. Then the Johnny Was bag that I cut apart, it was a long rectangle and it was really easy to sew the zipper to one side and then the other side of this long rectangle. And then I had to top stitch it, but because the Johnny Was bag was a long rectangle, it was a little harder to top stitch because I couldn't take the zipper all the way apart. This is not a zipper that um, will come apart. So, so I got the zipper put in the Johnny Was bag. I got it um, top stitched. The thing about the breathing room at the end of the zippers. Now this is where those of you guys who make bags are going to laugh. But I didn't think about that on my first prototype. And I put in the zipper that was going to be at the very top of a bag, like at the top of this Johnny Was bag that you're gonna see in a minute. If you sew the ends together too tight, too close to the pulls, it does this weird puckering thing at the end. So that's why it doesn't need a lot of breathing space at either end of the zipper, just a little bit. All right, so, so, with the Johnny Was bag. Remember, I started with a rectangle, I put in the zipper, so now it's like a this thing with the zipper. I've sewn up the two sides. Now I want to show you how to do the bottom. In order to get that flat bottom on the bottom of my bag, I'm going to have to sew across these bottom corners. I want to come in here and find the point and make sure 
that that is evenly matched with a 45 degree on either side. So I can flatten that out, double check it with the 45 degree line on my mat. And the design on the bottom of this bag is not going to line up exactly, exactly. And you know what? I don't care. If I cared, well, then I would have been more careful with that part. But what I'm going to do is measure up from the point one and three quarters of an inch. It's going to give me a nice flat bottom. I'm going to hold that. What that's going to do is make this a more substantial bottom with a wider opening on the top. And I'm actually hoping for that because I want to work out of this. I think it's going to stand up nicely. That is straight with the seam. I'm going to make a line here. And I'll do the same thing on the other side. I'll sew these and be right back. I will use my ruler and trim off leaving Oh, something like a quarter inch seam allowance there. I'll do the same thing on this side. And then, surprise, surprise, we'll turn it right side out. Once you get it turned right side out, and give it a look, you can see that this is really nice. It is made from a recycled material. I suspect it's a little bit waterproof. It stands up. It's got a cute zipper. What is not to like about that? All right, let's move on and look at the next one. Okay, but let's take a minute and look at this. It's just too cute, and I gotta tell you, I've been doing a little crochet at night, and this is the perfect size for the crochet I'm doing, and it sits there right next to me on the sofa. I'm a happy woman. Okay. <laughs> you know, sometimes it takes a lot to make me happy, and sometimes it just doesn't take that much. All right, so, so what was I gonna say? Using these recycled bags, I did actually do a test with the green, you know, the, the Whole Foods bag with my iron and happily I put a Teflon sheet over it before I took the iron to it. Oh yeah, it melted. <laughs> it just shrunk right up. D don't take an iron to these just willy-nilly. Test it before you do and I, I don't think ironing any of these plastics is a good plan. Um, what was the other thing I was going to say? I know the other thing. So before I jump into fabric, I want to tell you what else would be fun to make these bags out of. And that would be craft text. Oh gosh, <laughs> this is so cool. So you can tell I've got a green screen behind me. If you could see behind the, well, you know, instead of the quilt, there's this green thing. So if I hold up the green, oh, that is so weird. Okay, so let me hold up another color. The greens are gonna disappear. Um, but the other colors, make that one go away too. Craftex comes in a bunch of different colors. And what this is, what is this stuff? It is made out of something, some kind of fiber. It is pre-washed, pre-shrunk. This is dyed. It's tear resistant. It's vegan. So it's not leather, but it kind of looks like leather. I do not know what this is made out of. Some kind of plant fiber is my guess. And no, it doesn't tear. And you can crumple it and you can wash it. It's an interesting weight. This makes good bags too. Um, I don't carry craft text. You can find it all over the place online. Well, some all over the places online. Comes in bright colors, comes in neutral leather-like colors. Anyway, just pitching that out there. Um, okay, so the next thing I want to show you is a small bag I made and that I'm already using. Um, and it's made from linen and linen phrase. So I did a French seam on this next bag. I wanted to show you that. This bag is going to be smaller. And I decided that I wanted to have the zipper 
not on the very top of the bag, but on the front as it is on this little pouch. And I know what I'm going to put in there. I have a, a leather-like wallet here that I have been known to lay down and kind of forget to pick up. It blends in. I'm going to make this, it'll be a little wider than it needs to be, but I want to cut the bottom so that when I finish it, this will fit in there nicely, maybe with my nail file and go in my purse. I think I'll keep up with this better. I'm going to do a French seam on this, so that means I'll be sewing it twice. I'll lose about a half an inch to the seam allowance and I'm going to want this to fit in there snugly, but not too snugly. I probably want to trim that off right about there. On this one, I'm going to do a French seam. And what that means is I'm going to sew it with right sides out first and a very small seam allowance, not even a quarter of an inch and then I will turn it right sides together and sew a quarter of an inch seam allowance. And then when I turn it back uh, right sides out, the raw edges will be encased. Trim the corners and then turn the pouch wrong sides out. I used the soft point on my four in one Alex Anderson tool to get the corners punched out. You can use your fingers to work the edges out, but then you're going to want to press. I pressed these three sides and now I'm going to go sew this with maybe a little better than a quarter of an inch seam allowance because I'm going to want to close that up on that side and that up on that side so that if I put change in here, nothing will fall out. Even though it might fray a little bit, I don't think it'll fray a lot. I'm going to clip that off. Now, do I need to clip that corner? I don't think so. I think the top corners will be just fine the way they are. And this definitely needs to be pressed. Here it is, turned right side out edges pressed. The zipper's still a little hot from my iron, so I will open it carefully and test it with my little credit card holder and etc. That is wonderful. Yeah, I gotta tell you, I love this. I used it today and it just makes me very, very happy. And what's funny I remember these clocks. I remember these clocks. So, so yeah, this is nice. Now, the one thing, I, somebody asked about the length on the zippers. My zippers that I bought were six inches and eight inches. I had two six inch ones and two eight inch ones. And I wish I had more and I wish I had them in other colors. And I bought these so long ago. I don't even know if they're still available. I haven't Googled it to look. Um, but back in the day, my iPhone would have fit in here. Remember when iPhones were less long than they are now? My current iPhone does not fit in here, but that's okay. I don't care. If I wanted to, I could get a bigger zipper and make a bigger one that would hold my wallet and my phone, and that might be nice, but it's not what I did. Okay. So, the, the French seam, if you're going to use a French seam, you have to think through your seam allowance, how much there's going to be before you cut your fabric. Because we're just like making up the sizes of these zippered pouches, right? There's not really a pattern. The rate limiting thing is the length of your zipper. So... If you always sew with a quarter inch seam allowance and you're going to do a French seam, meaning you sew it one way and then turn it and sew it the, you know, 
right sides out than right sides together, you've got to add that additional width to account for the French seam. So I added about a half an inch all the way around as opposed to a quarter inch all the way around to account for that seam allowance. Boy, I hope that makes sense. Okay, then I have one more video, one more. I cut two pieces of linen for this bag roughly seven by nine. I've already inserted the zipper on the top. I'm going to turn it right sides together, sew the three sides with a quarter inch seam allowance, and then I'm going to do a zigzag to the outside to help keep the raveling down. I've sewn it and added a zigzag. I'm going to open this up and turn it right sides out. And I'm not going to worry too much about these bottom corners right now because I'm going to square off the bottom and those are going to get cut off anyway. I steamed this well and that end of the seam allowance might not bother me over time as I use the bag, but I may, just because I might, tack this down. So I'm going to pick one side or the other and flip that seam allowance. And so maybe where my top stitching is and tack that down so that when it closes, that seam allowance stays out of my way. And while I'm there, I'm going to add a bottom to my bag. I'm going to cut this off once I test and see if it's big enough, and then I will zigzag the edges of it as well. And I did go over the top stitching and I fixed that. That's, <laughs> okay, that's just cute. I'm going to have to use it to know for sure, but right now I think that is enough of a bottom to give this. <laughs> <laughs> That's just cute. Okay. Okay, so let me show you my four bags. I made this one with the six inch zipper. Very cute. Linen French seam. I made this one, and it doesn't look green because it's, you know, the green screen behind me, I'm sure. But this one also has the six inch zipper. It's a little wider though because with the zipper on top, it, it just ends up a little wider because you have to leave the breathing space at either end of the zipper. Now, the just to be clear, notice how, let's see here, let me move it here. Notice how tacking the seam allowance at that end of the zipper helps tidy up the end. I haven't done that yet on this one. So here, when I zip that closed, it closes, but it's, it's just not as tidy as it could be. What I want to do, what I forgot to do and need to do, is on this one, empty the bag out and then tuck this seam allowance to one side and sew it down where, where it's top stitched to kind of hide that seam and then that will make this bag a little tidier as well. And then I think this is going to disappear into the green screen. Oh yeah! Oh. <laughs> but that's just funny! Okay, so this is the green bag and you can't see the green, but you can see the bird and you can see the piece in peace. <laughs> Green screens are like magic. Um, anyway, so this is this is fun too. This one is made with an eight inch zipper and it's bigger this way. I don't have any idea what I'm going to do with that bag, but it's cute. It's almost like a lunch bag. You could add handles to these things. You could do all sorts of things. So, there you go. The, you make, you, 
All you need are zippers and a little bit of fabric and you can make some really cute pouches. These would, oh, you know what would be fun? These are easy enough that it could be really fun to make small presents for people. You know, like the, the pin cushions I've shown you how to make or, you know, all kinds of things. Make a useful little bag to give to your friends yeah yeah these are they're very quick they're lots of fun and if you make them in some kind of fabric that will mean something to the people who who you give them to that's nice you could add some embroidery it's all good so all right let's see here let me say my email address is becky.pieceofcake at gmail.com if you have something you would like me to um, talk about our show on Time Out, please do let me know because I will happily entertain ideas. And I look forward to seeing you next week at 2 o'clock on Wednesday, 2 o'clock Central Time on Wednesday afternoon for another Time Out. And until then, may you have many happy stitches. Thank you for watching. I'm going to hit the little button. See you next week.